everyone, I'm Udit. Today I'm going to talk about how to get your resume ready for engineering manager job applications at Google. This advice isn't meant for role transitions though, so it's primarily relevant if you're already an EM at a different company looking to move into Google, potentially alongside a bump up in title or leveling. I'm going to talk about six things that you should be covering in your resume to make it super relevant for Google. All this advice has been sourced by EM recruiters at Google. So it comes straight from the folks who are actually going to be reviewing your resume once it comes to the applicant tracking system. Lots of these tips are company agnostic. So I'm going to give examples to show you how you can actually make them relevant to Google and align them to what a Google recruiter would want to see from you. But if you want more personalized feedback or something targeted to the to a specific role you might be applying to, then these very same recruiters who provided this guidance also provide personalized one-to-one -one guidance for your resume. I'll include a link in the description below so that you can book some time with them. Quick introduction, I'm from Prepfully. We offer mock interviews and resume reviews from coaches and recruiters on our website, alongside a range of other interview prep services, such as interview questions, free practice with other candidates, interview guides, and so on. Right then, to the tips themselves. The first two tips are actually related to scope. So tip number one is write about your business and technical scope. This is basically about the degree of influence you have. Why is this relevant? As an EM at Google, you're going to be expected to have meaningful scope where you can drive the technical strategy and execution of. It's really important that you've done this in the past because Google typically isn't going to hire an EM unless they're already an EM or unless they can prove that they've driven a wide ranging scope of projects. From a business perspective, there needs to be a breadth of topics or complexity. And from a technical perspective, there needs to be meaningful technical depth. It's really important that this comes through in your resume. So an example for Google is Google's primary value is to focus on the consumer. This can be an internal user, it can be your external customers, it can be whatever, whoever you're targeting the delivery of your software for. But this is your opportunity to map your work back to a scope that drove value for an end user. Tip number two then is to be really specific about your people management scope. Your number one responsibility as an EM is to manage people and drive impact. So you want to articulate very clearly your breadth as well as depth of people management skills too. Your breadth of coverage is the number of people you, you manage and your depth of coverage is the degree of seniority of the people you manage. So do you manage seniors or principals? Are you a manager of managers or do you manage other people managers or do you primarily manage individual contributors? Also, it's really relevant to articulate if you manage non-engineering resources too, such as technical program managers or data scientists or technical support, for instance. Um, also, if you manage more specialized engineering roles, such as front-end engineers or Android and iOS engineers, or per perhaps production and site reliability engineers, network engineers, security engineers. The reason these distinctions are important is because you demonstrate the ability to manage increasing levels of complexity with the breadth and depth of the people you manage here. And as people become more senior, their needs become a lot more nuanced. So managing them is often a whole different ball game. So by articulating that you can indeed manage them or that your team includes them, you're giving your recruiter a very positive signal. So for Google, given the amount of responsibility they're going to invest into an EM, they really want to see what you've done with that kind of responsibility before. And at Google, the have you managed ICs versus have you managed managers themselves is an important distinction in determining what you get internally leveled at as well. The extra tricky thing with Google is that this is effectively a decision your recruiter has disproportionate control over. Since they set up your interview panel, and if you want to get a higher level, you need to be interviewed by folks who are greater than equal to the level you want to interview for. If your recruiter down levels you, then you're effectively going to get a panel which is just not high enough to give you the title that you might need. So it's really, really important that you need to get this across to your recruiter. The best and most effective way to do that is through a resume that talks for you. We can also, of course, share this during your recruiter call so that these expectations are aligned further down. Tip number three is to have a consistent approach to measuring and driving impact. You will ideally have driven impact across a range of scenarios and to a range of degrees. It's really important to give specific examples in your resume of these scenarios because driving impact is basically a core part of your job description. The key thing is both that you have a relevant metric for each achievement, but also use that metric to show the true extent of what you achieved. Here's a few examples of what you should typically look to covering here. You should talk about your customer and business impact. This could be in terms of customer experience. It could be measured through CSAT scores or reviews or in e-commerce, it could be returns or CS tickets or sales. 
You should also talk about business impact. Uh, these could be sales, revenues, transactions, cost reductions. You could also bring up technical impact if you had a chance to drive this. This could be latency, downtime or increases in reliability, uh, the scale you operated within. It could also have been that your team acted as a force, force multiplier through enabling other teams to maybe a really powerful API or a platform. There's also, of course, the nuance of performance impact. You could grow a team, for instance, from X to Y contributors. You could drive faster velocity of deployments or releases or learnings. These are all examples of ways in which you've driven impact and you should quantify them as much as possible in your resume. So for tip number four, let's talk about leadership and influence. Why is this important? As an EM, you're going to have to drive leadership through persuasion and influence. You'll need outcomes from teams and domains which aren't necessarily within your sphere of control, but are definitely within your sphere of influence. You should reference these in your resume since it's another leading indicator to your recruiter that you can succeed in an environment such as Google's, where this kind of collaboration is really, really strongly expected. In fact, Google explicitly calls this sort of thing Googliness, and it's their way of measuring your fit with Google's culture. Uh, this is something Google recruiters care about deeply and a really large proportion of candidates make the mistake of assuming that this is only going to be relevant in the interview itself. And to some extent that's true, it matters a lot more in your interviews. You're going to have an interview dedicated to Googliness and leadership, but your recruiter is basically assessing your resume at this stage uh, for whether or not you can actually pass those interviews. So to give them signals upfront that, hey, you've done this kind of collaboration before is a really strong thing to do. And you can do it relatively easily. So for example, you could use words like uh, led or collaborated with or partnered with. And these are all indicators that you've been in part of complex organizations and circumstances before where you had to drive impact through leveraging other people and other teams towards a common goal. Tip five then is to ensure that you cover the project management part of things. As an EM, you're necessarily going to have to manage projects which can get really difficult and complicated in their own right. So recruiters recommend giving examples of scenarios where A, you've managed a project end-to-end, -end, ideally from conception through impact, and B, where there was a good bit of technical complexity. Um, actually, not necessarily technical complexity. The complexity could have been on different fronts, but you should then specify these within your resume. I'll give three examples. So the first example is of technical complexity. This could be scale across a large user base. It could be security for a sensitive domain, such as payments. It could be reliability for a critical function, such as in healthcare. Uh, the second type of complexity is logistical in nature, such as a scarcity of resources, or really, really tight timelines, for instance, such as a regulatory project. And the third could be stakeholder complexity. So there could be a lot of stakeholders with very different needs and opinions whom you reconcile towards a common goal and a common objective and then drove progress forward. And it's important to specify the type of complexity within your resume so that your, again, your recruiter knows what you're talking about and what sort of domain you solve for within your scope. Last tip then, tip number six, is to ensure that you have an adequate coverage of technical skill within your resume. The vast majority of companies do expect technical competence from engineering leaders. Now, of course, there's plenty of companies who don't care about it, but Google isn't one of them. In fact, if you get invited to the actual interview, Google's going to give you a choice of a coding or a code review round. There's also going to be one or two system design rounds. They expect a relatively high standard when it comes to your technical skills. Uh, why? Because A, they want to see if you can guide your team through complex architectural decisions, especially in scenarios of the scales that you're regularly going to face at Google. And B, to ensure that you have enough knowledge and experience that you can hold your own in conversation with other senior level engineers who are contributing to this discussion, both within your team and outside. You can like also defend and rationalize the technical roadmap of your team. Otherwise, it's always going to get deprioritized. So from a resume perspective, here's three things that I recommend doing. Do list the technologies that you're familiar with, but have enough competence to be able to write code in if necessary. Do also mention if you've done stuff like pair programming or code reviews or peer interviews. Um, if you've done this kind of stuff in the past, it's a really strong indicator that you can be a force multiplier and take your technical skill and help other people around you. Finally, third tip here, absolutely mention anything that talks to your ability to design complex, large-scale systems. Example keywords to use here are words such as architected, designed, conceptualized, etc. And good metrics could be things like scale or the con constraints you were under, the improvement in performance or reliability, and so on. 
Good. That's all from us. I hope that was helpful. If you want to get specific feedback on your resume uh, or personalized advice, you can get your resume reviewed by a Google recruiter or a Google EM on Prepfully. Or if you just want to get advice on cracking the interview or interview practice in general, you can also book mock interviews or advice sessions with the very same experts. I'll include links to both in the description below so you can check that out. In addition, we've got a whole lot of additional information and advice on Google Engineering Manager interviews in general. So feel free to check those out. I'll include links to those as well. If you have follow up questions about something I might not have covered, feel free to ask below. Uh, and if you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck with your Google EM job application. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.